Tessa is having breakfast at Luja's house. Luja asks, so where are you planning to go today? Alessa responds, we haven't decided yet. Our tourist guide, Martin, will take us to new places today. We haven't explored much here, so we thought of enjoying our holiday by visiting new locations. Luja inquires further, so all three of you are going together today? Alessa clarifies, no, Alex will also come with me. Luja, with an annoyed expression, asks, did he tell you that he wants to come with you? Alessa replies, no, he hasn't told me, but I will ask him to come along. I'm sure he won't say no. Lucia voiced her knowledge of Alex's tendency to avoid going out with girls and having his own responsibilities. Alessa suggested finding out for themselves. Both of them went to Alex's house. Before Lucia could ask her question, Alessa inquired about Alex's wake-up status. Alex's mother informed them that he was having breakfast and would leave for work afterward. Alessa joined Alex at the breakfast table, while Lucia asked if he had worked that day. Alex confirmed that he had his daily routine and couldn't avoid going to work. Alessa then asked him to come with her to explore new tourist destinations and enjoy the day. Alex showed disinterest, but Alessa reminded him of something. She leaned in and whispered in his ear, threatening to tell his mom about his secret work. Alex pleaded with her not to do so. Curious about the secret between them, Lucia questioned their conversation. Alex assured her it was nothing and asked her not to mention it to his mom. Lucia sensed that something was being concealed. Eventually, Alex agreed to go with Alessa, who was thrilled about it. Lucia decided to join them as well, with Alessa being fine with her presence. They waited for Lily and Marcus outside. As Lily and Marcus approached, Alessa commented on their bickering, comparing them to a married couple. Lily complained about Marcus wearing mismatched shoes, with the left shoe on the right foot and vice versa. Martin dismissed Lily's concerns, which further irritated her. He suggested that she find another tourist guide and walked away. However, Lily stopped him, fixed his shoes, and instructed him to tie the laces correctly. Martin seemed smitten by her actions. Deciding to visit the city center, they all got into a cab. Alessa questioned Alex if anyone had cared for him like that before, referring to romantic care. Alex mentioned that his mother cared for him the most. Alessa clarified that she wasn't talking about his mother and asked if anyone had cared for him like a girlfriend. Lucia, overhearing the conversation, claimed to be his girlfriend and the one who cared for him the most. Alex dismissed Lucia's claim, stating that they were just childhood friends and didn't act like boyfriend and girlfriend. Alessa acknowledged the lack of a romantic relationship between them and inquired if Alex liked someone. Alex stated that he didn't have feelings for any girl like that. Alessa teased him, suggesting that he might not be interested in girls because he hadn't met the right one yet. She smiled and looked at Alex, subtly showing her interest in him. Lucia expressed her enduring care for Alex, but he didn't recognize her love, assuming she always said such things since their childhood. Martin intervened, reminding them not to linger and suggesting they get inside the cab since the driver was waiting. They all entered the cab and proceeded to enjoy their tour. During the tour, Alex received numerous messages from his boss, Adino, but he couldn't respond due to his phone's battery dying. In the evening, after a full day of enjoyment, Alessa visited Alex's home again, while Lily went to Martin's house. Late at night, around 10 p.m., Alex was charging his phone and discovered over a hundred messages from gang members and Adino himself. Upon reading them, he hastily left the house. Alessa noticed his departure and decided to follow him. Alessa saw Alex enter Adino's house and noticed him coming out hours later with a desolate expression on his face. Although Alessa observed his demeanor, she chose not to ask him anything and returned home herself. Admiral Marcus made a call to Commander Drake, inquiring if he had recovered from his last mission. Drake replied that he was not tired and asked if there was any work that needed his attention. Admiral Marcus informed Drake that he had a task assigned to him. He instructed Drake to visit Dr. Jekyll's home. It was a forced operation and a priority assigned by Admiral Marcus. The clients involved were VIPs, and higher government authorities had given orders to carry out these tasks. Upon reaching Dr. Jekyll's destination, Commander Drake initiated the conversation. 
Commander Drake, sir, Admiral Mockers mentioned that we are compelled to undertake the new operations. He emphasized that it is of utmost importance and Dr. Jekyll needs to perform the operations. These clients hold significant importance, and Admiral Mockers received orders from higher government authorities. Dr. Jekyll expressed his stance. Dr. Jekyll. I have already stated that I will not commence any operations until I achieve my goals. Commander Drake assured Dr. J. Cal. Commander Drake, we are here to fulfill your wishes, and we will provide anything that is essential to you. Dr. J. Cal conveyed his only wish. Dr. J. Cal, I have only one desire to kill the person who murdered my girlfriend. Commander Drake empathized with Dr. Jekyll's situation and mentioned that they were already investigating the traces of King Omex. If they found any updates on him, they would inform Dr. Jekyll. However, Commander Drake revealed the orders he had received. Commander Drake. I apologize, sir, but I have orders to follow. He ordered his soldiers to arrest Dr. Jekyll. They tried to apprehend Dr. Jekyll, who attempted to flee but was eventually captured. Commander Drake justified their actions. Commander Drake. Our main objective was to capture him and take him to Admiral Mocker's base. Commander Drake received a call from the base. Commander Drake to his soldiers. I need to return to the base immediately. Take all the data and bring Dr. Jekyll with you. I will meet you there. Commander Drake left the lab and headed towards the base. Dr. Jekyll questioned why he was captured and expressed his belief that Admiral Marcus could have handled the situation differently. The soldiers collected all the data from the laboratory and forcefully took Dr. Jekyll with them to Admiral Marcus base, where he awaited their arrival. While the vehicle was traveling on a lonely road, suddenly Patcher appeared in front of them. The driver attempted to run Patcher over, but he skillfully dodged the vehicle and used his sword to cut the truck's tire. The truck veered off and came to a stop. Patcher recognized the advantage he had gained. Several soldiers emerged from the truck and began firing at him. Patcher evaded the bullets with agility and retaliated by throwing knives at the soldiers, eliminating them. After eliminating the soldiers, Patcher approached Dr. J. Cal. Patcher, looks like you are in some trouble here. Dr. J. Cal, thank you for saving me. Dr. J. Cal expressed his desire to die from that day onward. Dr. J. Cal, once we are done killing King Omex, our next target will be Admiral Mokas. Patcher, how many enemies do you have? How many times do I have to save you from them? Dr. J. Cal, they want me to create more reincarnations of people. Admiral Mokas is now attempting to capture me and force me into this work. I will make sure he goes to any lengths to achieve his goals. Patcher, where should we go now? They can track you down anywhere. Dr. Jekyll, have you found out the location of King Omex? Patcher, I have some updates. King Omex has organized an event in two days, and he will be present there. Dr. Jekyll, do you know where the event is scheduled to take place? Patcher, the event location has not been revealed yet, but many criminals and gang members have been invited. Before the event starts, you should hide yourself from Admiral Marcus. Dr. Jekyll, I still have some connections, so I will hide there. But until then, do not disclose our plan to the enemy. Patcher, one of their members already knows about me, and he has informed King Omex. Dr. Jekyll, don't worry. If they organize another event, they will surely be present there. King Omex. This will be your final event. Another side of the city, Dr. Robin receives a call from his friend. Dr. Robin, hey, how are you? It's been a long time since we last spoke. How's work going? Robin's friend, yeah, everything is fine. Are you in the city or outside? Dr. Robin, I'm still in the city, working in the laboratory. Robin's friend. So, you haven't hired any new staff yet? Dr. Robin, yes, I hired someone, but they only came to the office for one day and haven't returned since. I know them, but they've been hiding the fact that they're working for another company. So, I'm still waiting for them to come back before I do the work myself. Robin's friend, that's okay. 
You really care about your staff like family. I have a request. Can you do me a favor? Dr. Robin, yes, of course. Robin's friend, do you know the famous Dr. Jacob? He wants to come to my home, but I'm going out of town. Can he stay with you for just two days? Dr. Robin, excited. Oh, he's my mentor. I've always followed in his footsteps. Yes, he can stay with me and let him know that he can stay for more than two days. Robin's friend, okay. I'll share your address with him. He'll reach your house this evening. Alessa, hi Alex, good morning. Alex, good morning. Alessa, is something wrong? You were there outside of Dino's house yesterday. Yes, at that time, I thought it wasn't a good time to approach you. So... Alex, so, you already know about my work. Yesterday, when I reached at Dino's house, he mentioned that their gang deals with other gangs for arms and heavy weapons. But suddenly, two people came out from our gang. They started killing members of the other gang. One was a man and the other was a woman. And Dino tried to convince the other gang members that these two weren't part of their gang. But before he could take any action, both gangs engaged in a violent fight. Many members from both sides were killed, and that Dino was injured by these two individuals. After the bloodshed, they told us to follow the principles of King Omix. They also mentioned that King Omix has organized a new event after one day. Those who want to join the event should come to the Grand Hotel where it will be held. And Dino said that on that day he called all his gang members to that building to take down King Omix. Just then, Lucia arrives, noticing the curious expressions on their faces. Alessa, nothing important. We were just discussing where to go today. Lucia, you can go anywhere. But I've already planned to enjoy the day with Alex in the park. Alex, Lucia, before deciding on your own, you could have asked me. I'm too busy today. Yesterday, my phone died, and so many things happened. Today, our boss has organized a big meeting, and all employees are required to be present. Lucia, who is your boss? I thought you were working in Dr. Robin's lab, so when did you start calling him boss? Alex, I've called him boss since day one. Well, I'm going now. I'll meet you all in the evening, so you two can enjoy your time together. Alex leaves the room. Lucia, the thinking. Alex, there's something you're hiding from me, and Alessa seems to know, but not me. About Alex, Alex often wears gloves to hide the small holes in his nails. When his body becomes dry or he feels tired, he puts his finger in a substance, not something too hard like metal, and absorbs the liquid from it. If he puts his finger into a person's wound, it absorbs all the blood, water, and nutrients from their body. The same goes for tree holes, he absorbs all the liquid from them. This process increases Alex's strength. If he doesn't absorb liquids, his skin will peel off from his bones, and he will die. Afterward, his bones cannot hold his body together. On the other side, at Clark's proprietorship office, Diago is having a meeting with Adeno and Gilbert. Diago, we've put in a lot of effort, but this person, King Olmax, keeps killing our men. Who the hell is he? Does he want to wipe us out of the city? Adeno, we need to take him down at his own event. Adeno, I agree, and I need the support of all the gang members. Father, brother, lend me your strength. I will go there myself. With my leadership, we'll take them down at the Grand Hotel. Gilbert, thinking, he's organizing another event, and he'll do the same thing again, killing people. People's greed will come to an end there. He's too smart, playing a game to make people kill each other, and he enjoys it. That's his game plan. Adino, so we didn't start any fights with anyone. Tiago, I wanted you to kill that bastard and spread fear under our leadership throughout the city. Adeno leaves the meeting and finds Alex and other gang members waiting outside the office, eager to know the outcome. Adeno, tomorrow, we're going to the Grand Hotel to take down King Omex. Alex, who is he? King Omex. Adeno, he was a top priority enemy of ours. He killed many of our members, and now he has organized another event. His members tried to kill me during the arms deal yesterday. Tomorrow, we'll take revenge for all our brothers. 
Another gang member, boss, are we going to take down just one enemy? Is he too dangerous? Adino, you will witness his true strength in the upcoming event. He is incredibly powerful, so do not underestimate him. He wields a mysterious magic that allows him to effortlessly dispatch his foes. Do not entertain the notion that defeating him will be an easy task. Next scene, in the evening. Dr. Jekyll rings the doorbell. Dr. Robin opens the gate and sees Dr. Jekyll standing in front of him. Dr. Robin? Welcome, sir. I was informed by my friend. I can't believe I'm meeting my idol now. I have studied all your work since college. Dr. Jekyll, thinking. So, he was one of my followers. Nice. Thank you for the appreciation. Should I come inside? Dr. Robin? Yes, yes. I forgot to tell you about it. Dr. Robin continues, sir, the achievements you have made are milestones for all of us. But after the first successful brain transfer, you haven't done any other brain transfers. Dr. Jekyll, yeah, due to a busy schedule. Suddenly, the doorbell rings again. Dr. Robin opens the gate. Patcher, is Dr. Jekyll here? Dr. Robin, yes, he is. And then they go to Dr. Jekyll. Patcher, should I stay with you for today? Dr. Robin, Dr. Jekyll. His brain was also transferred by you. I have seen the stitches clearly. Dr. Jekyll, yes, but don't ask too many questions from him. He can't answer. Dr. Robin, I'm curious about him, and I want to ask Patcher about his history and which era he comes from. Patcher, looking at Dr. Jekyll, nods. Dr. Jekyll, yes, I'm also curious about your story. Please tell us the real story, as what I have read about your history wasn't accurate. Share your true story with us. Patcher, okay. People called me the assassin. When I was seven years old, in my childhood, my brother Albert, who was 15, always took care of me after our mother's death. Our father died in a war with another nation, as our mother told us. But after she passed away, my brother realized he couldn't provide enough food for both of us. He felt that he needed to work more to feed me as well. So, he suggested that I should live with a wealthy family who would provide me with daily meals. I disagreed with his words, but I didn't know that he had already sold me to them. The next day, the rich couple came and took me with them. I thought they adopted me as their child, but when I reached their home, I saw the true picture. They had bought me as a slave. My brother and I didn't meet again since then. Days went by, and after 13 years, when I turned 20, the behavior of that rich couple changed. They started caring for me as their own child. They didn't have any biological children, so they began caring about me. I lived a happy life and accepted them as my family. But one day, as they were coming home, they were killed by some ninjas. I received the information and reached the scene. They were both dead. At first, I didn't have any clue about who did it, but slowly, I understood who the mastermind behind it was. Both the rich couple had mentioned my name in their will, so after a few days, all the businesses and responsibilities were transferred to me. A few days later, my brother came to the home and asked, Brother, I heard the news. What happened to them? Who killed them? I looked at him and said, I see you for the first time in so many years. You didn't come once during all this time. You sold me to these people, and now you come back, thinking I would forget all of that. Albert replied, Brother, I always cared for you. That's why I suggested you go with them because we couldn't earn that much money in these 13 years where we were. I interrupted, but I also cared for them. They didn't treat me as a slave, they treated me as their own child. Albert, how they treated you, you know very well, and that's why I took revenge by killing them. Patcher, did you kill them for me or for yourself? Why did you do this? It was only for money. Albert, listen, brother. I made a lot of efforts for you to acquire this property. You worked hard to gain their trust, and that's why they transferred all the assets to you. I've been waiting for this moment. Now we can both live happily without any poverty. Patcher, I can't accept this. What you did was wrong, and I can't accept this money either. I will donate all the money to the king's charity. Albert, if you don't want this money, then leave. But don't say it again. If you do, I will have no option but to remove your body parts. You'll stay alive, but as my puppet. Patcher tries to punch Albert, but some ninjas appear and capture Patcher. Albert, take him to the cage. I will teach him some manners on how to speak to elder brothers. 
As the ninjas take Patcher with them, he manages to free himself and runs away from the house. He heads to the forest, consumed by thoughts of his brother's actions and the murder of the rich couple. He stumbles upon an assassin group staying in the forest and decides to join them. The assassin's main work is to kill people for money, showing no mercy. After several months and many successful missions, Patcher's thirst for revenge against his brother remains unquenched. His name becomes well known among the people. One day, Patcher approaches the leader of the assassin group and requests a mission. The leader, who always trusts Patcher, assigns him four assassins to complete the task. Patcher returns to the house where his brother is staying. Unbeknownst to them, Albert has a group of skilled ninjas supporting him. As Patcher and one assassin enter the mansion, a fierce fight ensues between the ninjas and assassins. While the battle rages on, Patcher realizes that Albert may be hiding in a secret location within the house. He decides to go alone and investigate. Another assassin continues fighting with the remaining enemies behind them. Patcher reaches a hidden room below the floor, where more than 20 ninjas are present, and Albert is sleeping at a distance. Patcher fights each ninja, taking down most of them. However, his body is reaching its limits, and his wounds worsen, bringing him close to death. He collapses to the ground. After a few minutes, Patcher regains consciousness and sees he tied up in front of Albert, blood flowing from his wounds. Two ninjas stand behind Albert. Albert, so, you have killed many ninjas without caring about yourself. Now you're dying, and tears fall from his eyes. Tell mother and father that their elder brother loves them a lot, and also loves me. Albert instructs the ninjas to kill Patcher. As they begin to draw their swords, their heads are suddenly severed. Albert sees another assassin standing there. Patcher, you have done my work, friend. I wanted to see him die in front of me. Kill him. Before Albert can say anything, the assassin kills him. Assassin, hold on, we will reach the base soon, and then you will be fine. Patcher, forget it. I know my body is giving up. There is no strength left. Assassin, Albert was a cruel person. He killed many families and only loved money. Patcher, tell everyone our stories, how we achieved what we did for society. Patcher dies, and the assassin takes his body to their leader. Leader, he was a brave and kind person. He didn't fear death and fought tough opponents, even against ninjas. I give permission to preserve Patcher's brain. Now, Dr. Jaikal has reincarnated me. That's my story as an assassin. Dr. Robin, you were a great hero in your era, over 200 years ago. Dr. Jaikal, I think we have talked enough for today. Shall we continue the discussion tomorrow? Dr. Robin? Oh yes, of course. I forgot that you have other work to do. Carry on. Dr. Robin leaves the room where Dr. Jaikal and Patchett were staying. Patcher, tomorrow is the day when King Omex organizes the event at the Grand Hotel. Dr. Jagel, and tomorrow will be his last day alive. And then they go to sleep in their rooms. Next scene. On the next day, Alex prepares to go and meet Adeno. After finishing breakfast, he rushes like he's in a race because Adeno called everyone at 7 a.m. Alex arrives at Adeno's house late. Adeno, you're late. Why did it take you so long? Alex, I took time because I had to change public transportation. Adeno, oh, that's the problem. He calls his subordinates. Hey, give him that old bike that's still in the garage. Subordinate, yes, boss. Sir, but when we go to the Grand Hotel today, Adino, why are you asking? Do you want to go home? Subordinate, no, sir. I was just curious. Adino, I called all of you this morning because we need to pre-plan our strategy before going to the Grand Hotel. Alex, what kind of strategy? Adino, we're not the only ones going there. Many other criminals will be there to play the game. Our plan is to take down King Omax before the event starts so that nobody will play the game. Alex, so... When do we go there? Adino, we'll reach there at 4 p.m. The event may start at 6 p.m. in the evening. Before that, 
Start your training and learn as much as you can about the weapons. Adeno opens the training room for everyone. Adeno, go there. I'll be right back. While everyone goes to the training chamber, Adino calls one subordinate. Adino, last time, I shot bullets at Alex, and he didn't die, now it's the right time to check again. Use a shotgun and try to shoot as close as possible. Subordinate, but what if he resists or tries to run away? Or if any other member gets hit by the bullets, is it okay for you? Adino, I don't care. If my thoughts are correct, then today Alex is more useful than anyone. When the subordinate reaches the training room, he sees Alex sitting in the corner. He picks up the gun and approaches Alex. Subordinate, he calls Alex's name and shoots at his brain. All the other gang members witness the incident. They see that half of Alex's head is blown off by the shotgun. Alex falls to the ground, and the other gang members become angry and start beating the subordinate. A few seconds later, Alex stands up and asks, Why did you shoot me? The other gang members are terrified as they thought Alex was dead. They see his body regenerate the damaged part of his head. Alex, why did you try to kill me? Subordinates, the order I received from Adeno makes it clear that you are immortal, nobody can kill you, and this gains the trust of others, knowing we have the strongest team member who can withstand any bullets. Adeno, observing everything from behind the camera, says, now I'm confirmed that he can minimize damage during battle. Alex responds, is gaining my trust just a ploy to eventually kill me? Is that what you want? Subordinate, no, no. We only wanted to test your abilities to see if you could decrease the damage our team members might face. Adino enters the training chamber and addresses Alex, I trust you the most, and your immortality empowers us to fight efficiently. Remember the day I shot you, it was a test, not an attempt to kill you. Alex expresses his concern. But you know very well that I join here to protect Kyo and his wife. If I die, you kill them too. Adino responds, you know my work and it's not hidden from anyone. You joined us willingly, and I don't need to know your reasons. We are a mafia, and this is how we operate. If you don't like it, you can leave. However, remember that we need someone to replace you, and it's our policy that you cannot leave without a replacement. Alex thinks to himself, he knows everything about my mortality and abilities, but he doesn't know that I can absorb liquids from any surface. I'll have to wait for the right time to take him down. Alex says aloud, Okay, according to policy, I don't have anyone who can replace me here, but I work solely to protect them. Adino assures him, No problem. You can stay with us. As long as you're with me, your role is to minimize damage to our manpower, use your immortality and eliminate the person called by King Omex. Adino concludes, Today's training will continue, and after a few hours, we will head to the Hotel Grand. In another part of the city. Alessa. Alex isn't answering my calls. Where the hell is he? Should I go there? Should I go alone or with my friend Lily? Lucia. Hey, Alessa. How many days of holidays do you have left? Alessa. Are you suggesting that I should go back home today? Lucia. No. I noticed that you haven't gone anywhere today. Is it because Alex isn't here? Alessa, no, it's not about that. I can go alone or with my friend, Lily. She's also here. Alessa tries to call Lily, but she doesn't pick up the call. Lucia, I hope Lily hasn't answered your call yet. If she hasn't, we can go shopping together. I don't have any work today, so it'll be fun. Alessa. Before we go shopping, let's first visit Martin's house where Lily is staying. I wonder if she has married him by now. Lucia laughs and says, your friend seems to have a liking for Martin. Alessa responds, she likes him, but I don't think she loves him. They head to Martin's house to gather information and learn that Lily and Martin have gone to the Hotel Grand today. Alessa realizes that Lily has forgotten her mobile phone at home. Upon hearing this, she tells Lucia. Alessa, we need to go to Hotel Grand right away. Lucia suggests they are probably enjoying themselves. Maybe we should leave them alone today and let them have their couple moment. Alessa agrees but expresses her lack of trust in Martin, despite knowing what is planned for the day at Hotel Grand. Alessa, yes, they may be enjoying themselves. 
but I don't fully trust Martin. Lucia suggests, let's follow their movements. Let's go. They both head to Hotel Grand. Next scene. One hour before the start of the grand event organized by King Omex at Hotel Grand, people start gathering at the hotel. High-level criminals, and those who have participated and won in previous events organized by King Omex, are present in the hotel hall. Sandy, at the reception hall, addresses the crowd. Hello everyone, please make your way to the reception hall for further instructions. We will be closing the gates in 30 minutes. Before that, feel free to make your calls. Get ready for the next event to be organized here. We have acquired all five floors of the hotel for the event. The winner will be granted leadership of this town, and all gang members from different groups will follow them. In another floor of the hotel, Martin and Lily are enjoying their food. Martin, Lily, without Alessa, you can make decisions confidently. I assure you that you can make decisions about your life by yourself. Whenever you are with Alessa, she always involves her thoughts in your decisions. Lily, no, I can always make decisions by myself. Alessa doesn't get involved in everything. Yes, sometimes I agree with her, but not always. That's why I didn't go with her today. I came here with you only. Martin, so let's forget about discussions involving Alessa and just enjoy our night here. How's the food? Did you like it? Lily, yeah, it was really delicious. After a few minutes, more people start gathering and Lily notices the crowd. Lily, is there some kind of program or event going on here? Martin, looking at some of the people's faces, says, Lily, let's leave as soon as possible. Lily, why? Martin, I recognize some of the faces, and I think most of them are wanted criminals. We're not safe here. Lily hasn't revealed to Martin about work profile to him yet. She discreetly unlocks the hidden gun that Martin carries and prepares for any potential danger. Martin and Lily move towards the exit gate, but Alessa enters through the gate. Alessa signals some signs to Lily with her fingers, indicating that there is a threat to everyone's lives. Lily pushes Martin's hand and runs towards the exit. However, before they reach the gate, it closes and an announcement is made. Sandy, the wait for the event is now over. We welcome all the participants who want to play this game. Those who are already inside the hotel have also become a part of the game. If you don't want to play this game, you have five minutes left to reach the 5th floor, where we will provide security, and no innocent person will be killed here. Upon hearing these words, Lily quickly runs towards the stairs, knowing that most people will try to take the elevator. Alessa and Lucia join her, and they all run up the stairs to the 5th floor, in the stairwell. Lily, Lucia, Alessa, what's happening here? Why are they calling us to the 5th floor? Martin, and why are all the high-ranking criminals here? Does anyone know what's going on? Alessa, she explains everything she knows about the event, which she heard from Alex. Lily, we have no time left. We need to reach on time. Alessa, the event is about to start, but we still need to pass the fourth floor. Suddenly, they hear the sound of gunshots. Alessa, Lily, Lucia, Martin, be prepared for any incoming danger. They can see from the stairs that people have started using weapons to kill each other. They manage to navigate through the chaos and reach the 5th floor. Before they enter the room on the 5th floor, King Omex is with Sandy, Dindon, Manya, and Maddie. King Omex, due to the contract binding, you cannot kill me, so I can easily share my thoughts with you. Humans and their greed, it never ends. I have surpassed it, and I know all too well what humans desire. Money, slaves, pride, and many other things. Humans can't overcome their greed. I organize these events to cleanse society of the bad guys. I welcome those who haven't yet killed anyone here. Sandy, that's the kind of thinking I expect from my king. You will rule this world one day. Din Dan, I know you play these devilish games to kill people, but you have the power of gods. You can eliminate many of them in a day. Why do you engage in these activities? We already lost two people, Lotus and Red Tape. They died for you, but you didn't care for them. 
King Omex, with an angry face, why should I care for them? You, you, and you, referring to Dindon, Manya, and Maddie, you have killed many people in your lives and never apologized for it. Instead, you enjoyed it. I told you before, if you support me until the end, death won't reach you before the end of the age. But it's up to you. If you want to take the risk and kill many people in a single day, I can't protect you. In these events, follow my orders but don't obey them. If you obey, you will die. And yes, what you have done in your lives, don't expect me to always protect you. In my list of priorities, you are at the bottom. Everyone's mouth shut. They know they are puppets of King Omex. Sandy, my king, you always make bold decisions, and it makes me curious about you. You are a great king. King Omex, they play, they know how to kill, they feel it, and they die here. Nobody cares. After five minutes, many people arrive, approximately 120 individuals. King Omex is on stage. King Omex, I know you're all curious about the event, and we will provide you with all the information, including the players. But there's one thing I want to know from you. Those who haven't killed anyone in their lives, go to the next green room one by one. Those who have killed someone, stay here. People start moving towards the green room. As they stand at the gate, King Omex observes the purity of their souls, and then they enter the room. Alessa has a private conversation with Lily in one corner. Alessa realizes that King Omex wants those who have killed someone, regardless of the reasons, to stay in the green room. Lily speculates that King Omex possesses some ability to identify individuals who have killed someone, which is why he selected a few people out of the 120 present. It's then Martin and Lucia's turn, but King Omex stops them and commands them to stay in the green room. Guards push Martin and Lucia, leaving them unable to help Lily and Alessa. Martin to Lucia. Why did they stop her? She hasn't done anything like that. Lucia, based on what I've learned about them in the past few days, I can confidently say they haven't killed anyone. Martin, I hope the authorities will receive information about this and come as soon as possible. Lucia, I hope they're both okay there. We don't have any other option but to wait here for them. On the 5th floor, King Omex addresses the remaining individuals. King Omex, now that the bad ones have been eliminated, I won't listen to any reasons or justifications for your actions. I know most of you served in government positions like the armed forces, where you were tasked with killing people. Yes, they too have killed many, but now it's your crime when you take it upon yourselves to pass judgment. And for your crimes and guilt, I have only one thing to say. You will all die here. If you want to survive, kill as many as possible, and you will earn leadership of this territory. There are still 30 of you, so if you wish to leave this floor, you can. But remember, you cannot leave this hotel, as each floor has now become a site of bloodshed. And if you want to survive here, you must kill. Alessa shouts. Who gave you the right to kill innocent people? You are a killer yourself, blaming others. We served our duties to protect the nation from terrorism, and for our country, we can kill anyone, including you. She indicates to Lily with hand signs, telling her to take cover, as they plan to take down King Omex. Both Alessa and Lily find hiding spots, and engage in a firefight with King Omex's guards. Other former policemen and army officers join in, supporting Alessa and Lily, by taking positions and shooting at King Omex. King Omex manages to find cover, but realizes that he underestimated Alessa and Lily's skills, as a bullet had already grazed his ear. He becomes angry and summons Zadok, a powerful entity. Zadok arrives and asks King Omex why he summoned him, and notices the injury on the king's ear. King Omex explains that there are some individuals he wants Zadok to eliminate, granting him full freedom to do as he pleases. Zadok is delighted at the opportunity to kill these criminals and moves towards the remaining 30 people. Alessa, Lily and the officers are shocked by King Omex's power. Alessa suggests they escape before Zytek notices them, and they run towards the exit. However, Dindan and Manya, who are standing at the exit, confront them, resulting in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Despite their efforts, Alessa and Lily manage to open the gate and escape, but not without sustaining injuries. Alessa remembers that Alex is present, and decides to hide, until the massacre ends. Dindan and Manya, realizing there is no hiding place outside due to the ongoing event, close the gate of the 5th floor, trapping Zedek and the remaining officers inside. Inside the 5th floor, 
Zadik toys with the ex-officers one by one. Despite their attempts to shoot him, their bullets have no effect. Zadik grabs one officer by the hair and violently slams his skull onto the floor, killing him instantly. He continues killing the officers one by one, instilling fear in the remaining survivors. Zadik demands to know who shot the bullet that grazed King Omex's ear. He offers to spare the informant's life if they reveal themselves. Two officers admit that it was a girl who escaped with another girl. Zaytek lets Dindan and Munya leave. Indicating that they can go. He then reveals his intention to kill all of the officers and the two girls who fled. King Omex watches the events unfold with enjoyment through the CCTV cameras in the hotel. Zatek smiled as he began to eliminate the remaining people in the room. Meanwhile, outside the hotel, Adeno and his gang members kept Diago updated on their progress. Adeno, father, we're still working on clearing this floor. We will kill King Omex today. Diago, if you need any kind of support, our members outside the hotel are ready to enter. Just let us know, Gilbed is also outside. Adeno ended the call and turned to his team. Adeno, guys, we need your support to take down King Omex. Let's tackle this together. In the next scene, Patcher and Dr. Jekyll had a conversation. Patcher, we still need to wait on the second floor. Our chances of survival increase as the number of people decreases. So, we should stay hidden until the number shrinks. Dr. Jekyll, I understand, but we can't wait here indefinitely. We need to reach the fifth floor as soon as possible. I know King Omex is hiding there. Patcher. All right, I'll clear the path for you so you can reach the stairs. Once we're there, we'll make our way to the fifth floor together. Stay close to me. Patcher started eliminating people one by one, and Dr. Jekyll carried a gun, assisting Patcher whenever anyone tried to attack them. As they reached the stairs, more enemies appeared and started firing at Patcher. He quickly contacted Dr. Jekyll. Patcher, you go ahead. I'll catch up with you. He then started shooting at the enemies. Dr. Jekyll, filled with hatred towards King Omex, made his way upward with a determined expression on his face. The time had come for him to avenge his girlfriend. When they reached the fourth floor and continued towards the fiveth floor via the stairs, Dr. Jekyll noticed two girls running towards him. He pulled out his gun and started shooting. Alessa and Lily, realizing that someone below the stairs was shooting, signaled to each other to assess the situation. Alessa, who was there? We have no intention of killing anyone here, but if you want to kill me, then I have no option but to defend myself before you take any actions. Dr. Jagel, I have no intention of killing you. I have a deal with King Omex. Can you answer me? Is he on the fifth floor? Alessa, yes, he is. Dr. Jekyll raised his two hands, revealing a self-destruct bomb button between his two middle fingers. Dr. Jekyll, I'm coming towards you. Please don't shoot me. Alessa signaled to Lily with finger instructions to pinpoint the person, understanding the need to minimize risks. Dr. Jekyll thought, If they make any suspicious moves, I'll activate the bomb. The entire hotel will be wiped out. He approached Alessa and Lily cautiously. Dr. Jagel, so, you're taking me with you to King Omex. Alessa, pointing her gun. No, we're just trying to escape through the door over there. Dr. Jagel understood that they were the people who arrived after the announcement. Dr. Jagel, where are you going? Each floor is filled with enemies, and you won't survive. Stay on this floor. Most players would avoid coming here before they eliminate each other. Instead of facing hundreds of people on every floor, wait here for the few survivors. Lily. We were helping our friend, Alex. He's still fighting on the fourth floor. Alessa. Lily, why did you mention to him? We don't even know if he's still alive. When Dr. Jekyll heard Alex's name, he asked. Dr. Jekyll, was he the one who worked under Dr. Robin? Alessa, yes, but he's not working with him anymore. How do you know about Dr. Robin? Dr. Jekyll shared everything, revealing that he obtained information about Alex through Dr. Robin. Alessa, I still don't understand why you came here. Dr. Jekyll, it's a personal matter. 
and he moved towards the room. Alessa realized that he came here solely for King Omex. She warned him from behind. Alessa, if you want to live, don't go inside. There's a monster named Zadok in there. He has killed many people and is still hunting down the rest. Dr. Jagel, I have one motive in my life, and no one can stop me now. And he enters the room. Alessa and Lily move ahead to the fourth floor. Dr. Jekyll enters the room and sees Zatek killing the remaining individuals. They try to shoot Zatek for survival but can't defeat him. Two of them manage to escape, and Dindan and Maya don't stop them. Dr. Jekyll shouts from the front door. Where are you, King Omex? Where are you hiding? Face me. Do you remember me? You will remember my secretary, whom you killed in the laboratory. When King Omex hears this and sees Zatek running towards Dr. Jekyll to kill him, he comes out of the CCTV room. King Omex, stop, Zatek. Are you Dr. Jekyll? Dr. Jekyll, so, you haven't forgotten me, now you're going to die. Dr. Jekyll aims his gun at King Omex, but before he can pull the trigger, he sees the body of the small thief he killed in his laboratory. His hands tremble, but he manages to control his emotions. As he shoots towards King Omex, King Omex switches to another god, causing the previously possessed god to disappear automatically. The god of savior, Risen, appears and notices bullets coming towards King Omex. He deflects all the bullets. Dr. Jekyll sees that none of the bullets he fired had any effect on King Omex. King Omex, I have no intention of killing you. Please join me and become part of the change for humanity. My intentions are clear, and I haven't killed anyone with my bare hands. The Sun God does that. Join me. I know you feel guilt for killing that person, the one whose body you disposed of to save me. I forgive that mistake because you helped me regain a new life here. Dr. Jekyll, that was my biggest mistake in life, regenerating your life. You killed my love, and now you expect me to join you. It's time to cleanse this area with all your people. I will take you down. Dr. Jekyll pushes the trigger between his two fingers, and just before the explosion begins, Reason creates a shield around Dr. Jekyll. Dr. Jekyll explodes with the bomb and dies. Inside the shield, a massive explosion occurs, creating a human-sized hole in the floor. King Omex, first showing an emotional face, then laughs. King Omex, foolish humans. They always carry burdens in their lives. He could have lived longer if he had let go of revenge. But for the sake of love, he sought revenge. He gave me a new life, but he is no longer here. However, when I complete the changes in society, I will surely give him all the credit because without him, I couldn't have done this. Upon witnessing King Omex's remarkable abilities, Dindan, Manya, and the other members feel fear. The remaining ex-soldiers, heavily injured, notice Reason's presence and realize that they might have a chance to survive. Gathering their remaining strength, they begin shooting towards King Omex. Four ex-soldiers remain, catching King Omex's attention. King Omex, oh, I forgot about you. So, you want to die now? Risen, kill them all. Risen, I can't. You forget that I can't kill anyone. My only purpose is to heal and protect people from any incoming damage. King Omex, yeah, forget that. He calls Dindon and Manya to eliminate the remaining ex-soldiers. After a few minutes, they succeed in killing them. Now I can freely enjoy the event. He proceeds to the CCTV room. Inside the green room, the remaining people, including Martin and Lucia, are searching for a way to help Alessa and Lily. Lucia is unaware that Alex is also in the same hotel. On the other side, Patcher is still engaged in a fierce battle, struggling to find a way to reach the stairs. Alessa and Lily reach the fourth floor, finding cover and hiding. Gunfire erupts throughout the floor. Alessa says, we need to find Alex and then kill the organizer, King Omax. It's our mission. After that, everyone will be free, and they won't need to kill anyone anymore. Lily asks, right Alessa, but why is Alex here? Is he also playing the game? Alessa explains everything that has happened with Alex and their shared experiences. Suddenly, they hear a massive explosion from the corridor nearby. They cautiously move toward the source of the noise. Someone tries to attack them from behind, but Lily manages to take them down. They proceed to the next corridor, 
where they witness Alex standing like a shield, taking all the bullets. Adeno and his gang members are taking cover and shooting at others. Alex retaliates, taking down the enemies one by one. Alessa and Lucia are in disbelief as they witness Alex enduring the onslaught of bullets without sustaining any injuries. Alessa wonders, does he have some kind of powers? How is he able to withstand it like that? Every time a bullet hits Alex, blood spills out, but he quickly heals, leaving his body covered in red blood. The wounds close up, but traces of blood stain his clothes, altering their color. Alex moves ahead when suddenly the upper roof collapses, and debris falls onto Alex's head, crushing half of his skin with a large boulder. Alessa looks at the debris that has fallen on Alex and shouts his name, tears streaming down her face. Adeno observes the situation from behind Alex and emerges to eliminate the remaining enemies firing in Corridor A. He calls his subordinates to remove the debris covering Alex. Alessa runs towards them, with Lily close behind, as they try to clear the debris. Adeno realizes that they know Alex. Alessa repeatedly calls out to Alex, pleading for him to stay still and assuring him that they will free him. As they near the final stage of debris removal, they notice that some parts of Alex's skin are torn, and although he is still breathing, he is not fully conscious. Tears well up in Alessa's eyes. Alex's right leg and right hand bones protrude through the skin, and within seconds, small bone fragments start intertwining with the surrounding tissue. Alessa and Nadeno are shocked by this revelation, as they had not noticed the condition of Alex's bones before. However, Alex's body begins to recover from the damages inflicted by the debris. Alessa recognizes that Alex has suffered major injuries but can't believe how he is healing on his own. As Alex regains consciousness, he questions why Alessa and Lily are there, as he had warned them to stay away. Alessa explains that Lily came with Martin, unaware of the events taking place. Concerned, Alex asks about Martin's whereabouts, and Alessa informs him that Martin is with Lily. Alex covers his face with his hands, realizing that they are all together. During their discussion, Adeno remarks on Alex's healing abilities, comparing him to an immortal. He inappropriately comments on Alessa's appearance and touches her, despite her protests. Alex intervenes, asserting that she was his girlfriend. Upon hearing this, Adeno realizes Alessa's significance, and reveals that she was with them before the mission. He threatens to kill both of them, exploiting their relationship. Alex's face displays anger, but he is unable to take any action against Adeno's threats. Adeno declares that the corridor has been cleared, and they all look ahead, preparing for what lies ahead. From above, Adeno points his finger and says, Here he is. We need to go there. He is our next target. As they reach the nearby stairs in Corridor A, gunshots suddenly erupt from the third floor below. Patcher arrives and engages in a fight with the enemies on the third floor, while Adeno, who is leaving Corridor A, notices that members from Corridor B start firing towards them. Realizing they are stuck, Adeno says, We're trapped here. We need to clear the area from both sides before we can move ahead to the stairs. He then signals to Alex, saying, Alex, move ahead and kill the people hiding on the stairs. Meanwhile, Patcher gets stuck between the third and fourth floor stairs. Despite Patcher firing shots and throwing knives at Alex, all of his aim hits, but Alex remains unhurt. Patcher wonders, How is it possible that someone doesn't feel pain? He knows that if Alex reaches the stairs he won't survive. Patcher throws a smoke grenade towards Alex on the fourth floor, and quickly runs towards the fifth floor. When Alex reaches the stairs, he realizes that Patcher is no longer there, but some other enemies from the third floor run towards him. Alex tries to shoot a few of them, but there are more than he can handle. They overpower him, grabbing his hands and legs. One of them repeatedly stabs Alex with a knife. Adeno, unable to see what's happening to Alex due to the heavy smoke and continuous gunfire, instructs Alessa to call Lily. Alessa says, we need to find another way to kill the enemies in Corridor B. Lily agrees, somewhere in the last room could be helpful for us. They both move towards the last room in Corridor A. From that room, they discover a minor gap connecting the windows of Corridor A and Corridor B. They somehow manage to reach Corridor B, and from behind, Alessa and Lily kill all the enemies who are firing towards Corridor A. After a few minutes when the smoke clears, 
Adeno sees that 12 to 14 people are beating Alex and repeatedly stabbing him with a knife. However, Adeno hears the sounds from Corridor B, realizing that Alessa has already killed all of them. Adeno signals his members to start firing openly, and they begin shooting towards their enemies. Some bullets hit Alex as well, but all the people in the area are killed. Adeno reaches Alex and says, Man, without you, I assure you that I would have lost all my members. Thanks, brother. You are really useful to me. You're a great man. Now, it's up to you. Alex slowly stands up and responds. Now you've made me a beast by doing these things. They all proceed towards the fifth floor, with Alex slowly walking upward. However, Alessa and Lily push him back and say, Alex, this is the right time. We need to move out from here. Alex, but what about Lucian? She was also my friend. I need to save her. And if Adino kills King Omex, he will also kill these innocent people. Alessa, I assure you, nobody can defeat that devil king. He has such kind of magical powers that he can use to summon any god. Alex, he can't do that to me. I want to go with them. If I don't go with them, Adino will kill others as well. He moves towards the stairs but doesn't reach the fifth floor before. King Omex makes an announcement saying, Hey, hey, hey. Someone with special powers here. For those who want to reach the fifth floor, let me tell you. You cannot do so without ending the game. I know every movement of yours. So, clean all the floors, and then you will be able to enter the fifth floor. Adeno tries to move upward, but he can't ascend the stairs due to King Omex's magical powers. Alex, Lily, and Alessa also attempt, but are unable to reach the fifth floor. However, they can move to the third floor easily. Adeno realizes the situation, saying, Now I know very well. They want us to kill all the enemies on all the floors, and then they will open the gate. They sit around, looking for survivors on the third floor, as a massive bloodshed occurs from the ground floor to the third floor. Patcher manages to reach the fifth floor before the shield closes. When Patcher arrives, Dinden and Manya are already there. And the bodies of many ex-soldiers were in pieces, with the entire floor covered in blood. Patcher noticed a small piece of Dr. Jekyll's coat near the hole that was made before the bomb blast by Dr. Jekyll. Dindon saw it, and asked Patcher, Who are you, and why are you here? What do you want? Do you want to go with the survivors? It's too late for you. Go outside and try to survive until the end of the game. He started his chainsaw. Minya asked, Should we inform King Omex that someone is here? Dindon! What a fool you are, Manya. We can easily handle these small incidents. Prepare yourself with your screwdriver and knife. Patcher surveyed the situation and understood. There's someone more powerful than us here. I can't kill King Omex without knowing who this enemy is. Dindum, did you hear that, ma'am? Go outside and wait for the event to close. It doesn't matter who wins the match for King Omex. He will select members from the winners... Upon hearing this, Patcher apologized. Sorry, man. I didn't know about that. I will wait outside until the event is over. Next scene. Two ex-servicemen, fearing for their lives, followed the path of the two girls. However, on the fourth floor, when Patcher threw the smoke, they managed to reach the fourth floor, but they were killed by Adeno's massive fire. Now they were all stuck. Alessa and Lily... Upon seeing the dead bodies on the stairs, recognized them as the two ex-servicemen. Adino, who had presented himself as a brave character, often hid behind his gang members during fights, and tried to shoot enemies as much as possible. One of King Omex's members knocked on the door. King Omex instructed Risen to check and open it. When Risen opened the door, he saw one of their fearful members and reported to King Omex. Sir, we are trapped inside here. The army has surrounded the hotel from all sides, and some teams have even reached the roof above us. How can we escape this situation? King Omex, relax, buddy. I will protect all my subordinates. They can't enter this area without my permission. Risen has already created a barrier shield, so even if they stand outside, they can't come inside here. Risen questions, but how do they know you are here and that this event is taking place? King Omex explains, it's simple. 
Everything happening in this hotel is being broadcasted live for the audiences. Many people are enjoying this platform. I could invite more people for the next event, except for the incidents on the fifth floor. Prison realizes, so you are organizing a new event online, and people outside the hotel will also be able to watch the movements of the players inside the hotel. King Omex reflects, you know, when I was the king of my time, no criminal activity occurred in my kingdom. All the people were honest, and they were rewarded based on their honesty. We always attacked other kingdoms to purify their people. But in that life, I couldn't utilize my power properly. Now, I have the opportunity to possess a powerful god and fulfill my tasks. Risen queries. But why do you only want to possess gods? Wouldn't you desire immortality as well? King Omex, yes, I always wanted immortality in my life. But when I heard the story of a skeleton that can grant immortality to any person, I changed my mind, and when the gods asked me for my wish, I asked for some kind of magic so I can possess any god for my work. However, the gods placed restrictions before granting my wish. I cannot obtain immortality powers from any gods. I am always dependent on the powers of the gods, and if I possess one god and one another at the same time, one of them must leave automatically. I also cannot directly kill anyone with my hand or using a weapon. If I kill someone with my hand, I will die at the same time. However, killing people through a god purifies their souls from guilt in this world. Risen expresses his excitement saying, Sometimes, your thoughts about purifying souls get me more excited. So, how much have you achieved so far? King Omex confidently declares, Today, hell will be filled with devil souls. Many of them are already dead, and a few are still alive. When he looks at Adino's face in CCTV room, and sees Alex with him. I want him to come here alive so we can discuss something. Next scene, Commander Tatum, a brave soldier who fears no mission, is now connected with Admiral Marcus. Marcus, what's the situation outside? Have you managed to enter the hotel yet? Tatum, sir, we have secured the entire area, and the police forces are under our command. However, we haven't found a way to enter the hotel. There seems to be some kind of magical barrier in place. We are waiting for the right moment when the barrier is removed. We have also targeted underground and aerial evacuation routes. Marcus, we need Dr. Jekyll alive, no matter what. Is that clear? Tatum, yes, sir. And what about the others? Should we capture all of them? Marcus, they are all criminals. This event was organized by a deranged individual who has caused numerous deaths, including the police station bombing and other murders. Kill them all. That's my order. Tatum pondered the order questioning why so many had to be killed, and why Dr. Jekyll was of such importance to Marcus. As he contemplated, he received an indication from the fourth floor. Alessa was using a torch to send a message to the army commander outside. Tatum understood the situation inside and knew that Alessa had ties to the military. He sent a signal in response, Tatum's message to Alessa. When the barricade is cleared and we enter the hotel, I want you to stay on that floor so we can rescue you. Alessa sent another message in response. Please don't send these updates to Admiral Marcus. I will give you the reason later. And then her torch's battery died, cutting off any further communication. Tatum understood that Alessa possessed information about Admiral Marcus that she didn't want to share with him at the moment. They both waited patiently for the shield to be closed, anticipating their next moves once they could proceed. Dr. Robin, sitting at the dinner table, couldn't contain his curiosity about Dr. Jekyll's research. Although Dr. Jekyll had left early for work, he had left behind his equipment. Dr. Robin's desire to know what Dr. Jekyll had been researching led him to open Dr. Jekyll's bag. However, the bag was secured with a strong password. After multiple attempts and half an hour of effort, Dr. Robin successfully unlocked the bag. Inside the bag, he discovered a diary and a memory chip. Dr. Robin eagerly opened the diary to its first page. The diary began with an explanation from Dr. Jekyll, stating that he had written it to share his knowledge and research discoveries. It contained information about brain transplantation, and included videos of Dr. Jekyll's life and operations, which were stored on the memory chip. Overwhelmed by the revelations in the diary, Dr. Robin proceeded to another room, which was kept cold. In that room, he opened a shelf to reveal a head preserved in liquid. It was his daughter's head. Tears filled Dr. Robin's eyes as he thought about reincarnating his daughter. However, he needed a suitable body for the brain transfer. As Dr. Robin closed the shelf and continued reading Dr. Jekyll's diary, he received a call from his subordinates. 
They informed him about a live stream they had come across, showing Alex's involvement in an event organized by King Omex in a hotel where people were killing each other. Dr. Robin requested the link to the live stream and watched it attentively. He noticed that Alex was accompanied by Adeno and his gang members, engaged in a fight with others. Concerned about Alex's safety, one of his subordinates suggested informing Alex's mother. However, Dr. Robin dismissed the idea, expressing confidence that Alex would be fine. He believed that Alex couldn't be killed easily, as he had survived an acid attack before. Dr. Robin decided to investigate further, rewinding the live stream to its beginning. Half an hour into the live stream, he recognized Patcher and Dr. Jekyll among the participants. To his astonishment, he also noticed the presence of three individuals who had been responsible for his daughter's death. Although they had been arrested before, Dr. Robin's anger flared upon seeing that they were still alive. Driven by his rage, Dr. Robin made his way to the hotel. He observed that the entire area was surrounded by army troops, and any attempt to send a drone towards the hotel was thwarted by a shield. Realizing the presence of the shield, he contacted Alex and managed to establish a connection Dr. Robin informed Alex about the live broadcast of the event, and cautioned him to hide his face, as many people had already witnessed his fight. He also requested assistance from Alex inside the hotel. Dr. Robin shared photos of the three wanted killers, urging Alex to capture them alive if possible, or, if necessary, eliminate them without hesitation. Additionally, he shared photos of Dr. Jekyll and Patcher, requesting Alex's help in protecting them as well. Alex, why kill them? Have they done something wrong to you? Dr. Robin, no, do you remember what happened to my daughter? Alex recalls the whole story of what happened to Dr. Robin's daughter on that day. Looking at the other photos shared on his phone. Alex, is that the famous Dr. Jekyll who has achieved the milestone of transferring the human brain? Dr. Robin, yes, and stay safe. When the shield is closed, I will join you there. I believe the army officers have been given orders to kill everyone inside, so please help Dr. Jaikal and Patcher as soon as possible before the shield opens. Alex proceeds to the third floor. Adeno questions. Where are you going? We need you here. Alex, I have some business down there. I will return before the shield opens. Alessa interjects, take me with you, and Lily should come too. Alessa knows that without Alex, Adina will take advantage of the situation. They make their way towards the third floor. While they are moving, Alessa asks. Is there any important work you need to do here? Alex shows him his phone and says. I want to find all of them. When Alessa looks at the last two photos, she identifies. Alessa responds, when we were moving towards the fourth floor, we encountered him. He went directly to King Omex. I doubt he is still alive. Upon hearing this, Alex remarks. So maybe we should go there when the shield is removed. Upon reaching the third floor, they observe many dead bodies. Corridor C and D have ongoing fights. They move towards that area and Alex realizes that two of the individuals from the photos are already dead. Alex concludes. So the remaining individuals are Patcher and the criminal girl named Quinn. Deciding not to proceed further on the third floor, they head to the second floor. As they reach the second floor using the stairs, Alex sees Quinn fighting with four people barehanded. She breaks the bones of each one and then snaps their necks, one by one. She was exhausted after the fight. When she looked at Alex, she rushed towards him and pushed his hand with such force that Quinn felt intense pain in her bones, as if they were about to break Quinn fell to the ground, and Alessa kicked her in the face, rendering her unconscious. Alex tied her hands and carried her on his shoulders. He dropped a message for Dr. Robin, informing him that he had caught Quinn, and that the other two men were already dead. He mentioned that there were no updates on Patcher and Dr. Jekyll yet, but he would inform him later. They proceeded to the fourth floor. As they began moving towards the second floor, they heard the sound of grenades exploding on the first floor. Alex knew that someone was using grenades to kill as many people as possible, and would soon make their way to the third floor, and then to them. Alex instructed Alessa and Lily, You should take care of her, I will check on Patcher on the first and ground floors. He headed to the first floor, where there was no electricity due to the massive damage caused by the grenades. 
Alex then checked the ground floor and confirmed that no one was alive. Many people had died there. After confirming that Patcher wasn't there, he returned to the first floor. Alex noticed someone using a torch and running towards him, asking for help. He ordered the person to raise their hands, realizing they had no gun. As the person approached, Alex saw that their mouth was stitched shut with a girl's hair. He asked who did it, and the person pointed towards a dead individual. Alex questioned. Should I remove the stitches? The person nodded. Alex found a knife nearby and carefully cut the stitches one by one. When he removed the last stitch, the person's mouth exploded into pieces, killing them instantly. A bomb had been planted inside their mouth, and it detonated right in front of Alex, causing severe damage to the front side of his face. After a few minutes, Maddie emerged. Maddie was another member of King Omex's group, and he was once again participating in the game. King Omex had observed from the CCTV footage how Maddie had survived during the first game. Maddie approached Alex and the other person. He had planted a timed bomb in the mouth of that person. Maddie laughed and said, I didn't expect that he could take someone else down with him. Anywhere or anytime he opens his mouth, the bomb explodes. How foolish he is. Rest in peace. He then stood up and moved towards the stairs, heading to the third floor. Alex regenerated his face once again and overheard everything. He covered his face once more and proceeded towards Maddie. King Omex, impressed by Alex's power, stated, I want his skeleton. With this skeleton, I will attain immortality. Ryzen was also astonished, having never seen such immortality before. Regenerate. Reason pointed out to King Omex that there was no true immortality, as Alex couldn't survive in certain situations such as fire, water, and space. King Omex understood that they could potentially remove the skeleton from Alex's body in these three scenarios. Reason confirmed that it was indeed possible. Now King Omex realized that if he wanted the skeleton, he could easily obtain it from Alex. King Omex expressed his excitement about the event and mentioned his preference for killing people slowly in order to fully enjoy the experience. He reminisced about his past conquests and the loyalty of his soldiers. He expressed a desire to possess the skill that Dr. Jekyll had to regenerate them into new bodies. Reason informed him that it was too late for Dr. Jekyll, but he suggested the possibility of possessing the Devil King, who could assist him. However, King Omex decided against it, stating that the Devil King didn't follow his orders and did as he pleased. He considered seeking help from other gods instead. Next scene. On the fourth floor, Adino sent regular reports to Diaga, informing him that if anything were to happen to him, all the family members of Alex should be killed. Maddie reached the third floor and found everyone dead. He then proceeded upward to the fourth floor. When he saw Alex alive on the stairs, he was shocked and threw two grenades at him. The grenades exploded, damaging Alex's skin. However, Maddie witnessed Alex's body regenerate the damage, even to the skeleton. When Alex fell to the ground upon impact, he regenerated the damage to the floor as well. Maddie couldn't comprehend this and pulled out another grenade. Before Alex could regenerate again, he threw the grenade at him. However, Alex quickly responded and threw the grenade back at Maddie, causing it to explode and kill him. Alex was now extremely exhausted. He felt his body needed liquid nutrition. He removed his gloves and gathered any available liquid sources from the floor, including fruits and vegetables. However, he still didn't fulfill his nutritional requirements. He then touched his fingers to the blood that was scattered on the floor, allowing the holes in his fingers to absorb the blood. This revitalized him, eliminating his weakness. Now Alex moved towards the fourth floor, where Adino and his remaining three members, including Alessa and Lily, were present. They had captured Quinn. Adino, I know him. She is too dangerous. What should we do with him? Alessa, it doesn't matter to you. Adino, yeah, what matters to me is you, Alessa. And he's again doing dirty things with Alessa. Lily also knows that if she resists, he can do many things. He has so much power outside this grand hotel. Some minutes later, Alex reached the fourth floor and saw Adino engaging in the same behavior. He managed to control his emotions, and then the barriers were opened for the fifth floor. 
Outside the Grand Hotel, Commander Totem saw that the barrier had been removed. He sent teams inside and entered the hotel himself. Dr. Robin noticed that most of the soldiers went inside with Totem's team. He shared updates with Alex through messages. Alex read the message in front of Adino. Adino, what's happening? Is it any important message you received? Alex, just a company ads message, nothing important. Alex handed his phone to Alessa, and they all moved forward to the fifth floor. When Alessa ran away from the fifth floor, she encountered Zotek, who had killed many people there. She remembered that moment. Alessa, please don't go inside. There is a monster who killed everyone there. Lily also said the same thing. We need to warn everyone. Two members with Adina also felt fear when they heard about the way Zotek killed people. Adno, what kind of rubbish are you speaking? No one could do such things. Inside his brain, Adino knew that if Alex had powers of regeneration, then what he had heard about King Omix might also be true. Adino was well aware that if Alex was on his side, no one could kill him, not even if King Omix possessed any god. They couldn't kill Alex. We were going inside. And then the gates were opened. Dindan and Mania were at the door. Come with us, they said. And don't use any weapons. Furthermore, King Omix will meet you himself. They entered the room. Now King Omix came out from the CCTV room, accompanied by Ryzen. When Ryzen saw Alex, he noticed the skeleton inside him and recognized whose skeleton it was. Alex also noticed that Ryzen was continuously watching him, and he felt some anger towards Ryzen. King Omex, hey, hey. There are many people alive now. Welcome, all of you. You all don't know me, but before I introduce myself, let's release those who are inside the green room. He started releasing them, and with Mobtin and Lucia, they all moved towards the exit gate. King Omex informed them that he had developed a secret path that led directly underground and opened up to a nearby pop. He urged them to leave as soon as possible, because the Omi had entered the area with orders to kill everyone. He had gathered all the information about how the government didn't care about the innocent people's lives. He emphasized that he always cared for innocent people who hadn't killed anyone, unlike the government and the criminals who killed them. Dindan and Mania pushed everyone towards the exit gate. Once they all reached there, the gate closed. King Omex. So, here we are. Oh yes, I am King Omex. For those who don't know me, I have the ability to possess any god, and I use that power to change society. He explained that he had gone through a lot of hardships to gain this power, and that the gods trusted him, which was why they accepted his works. His aim was to clean society from evil minds, corruption, greed, and lies. He believed that those who had impacted other people's lives through their wrongdoings didn't have the right to live in this society. He started by cleaning up all those who had killed someone in their lives without feeling guilty. He looked towards Alex. Upon hearing these words, Alex realized that King Omex knew everything about the skeleton. Adino was also shocked because he had thought about attempting to kill King Omex from behind Alex. Alex, what are you saying? I don't understand. King Omex, why do humans show such innocent behavior to others? When you know everything, why do you ask me such silly questions? I spent most of my life searching for the skeleton. When I found out that the skeleton was inside someone's body, I was excited to get it. But at that time, I didn't find out who that person was. One day, when I possessed the God of Snow, Ira, she knew everything about it. But she obeyed my orders to share the information and freeze everything, including the castle. After I got free, I learned that she was punished by the gods for obeying my orders and that she still lives as a human in this world. Upon hearing this, everyone was shocked, including Alessa and Lily. King Omex, so, you saved many people, and they are still alive. I hope you will all join my group. Suddenly, Patcher entered the room carrying a big machine gun. Patcher, end this now. He started firing towards King Omex. Alex knew that Patcher was also on the list, and he needed to save him. King Omex's legs were heavily damaged, and before the bullet reached his heart, Ryzen created a shield to protect him. 
Adino saw this opportunity and started firing at Ryzen, while King Omex's legs were being healed. King Omex, humans. They don't understand us, but we know that these kinds of situations happen anytime. Alessa came near Alex. Alessa, Alex, this is the right time. We need to get out of here. Adano can't do anything to us now. He's still busy taking revenge from King Omex, and the army officials are getting closer. They will reach here any time. Alex, looking into her face. Yeah, of course. Patrick is here, and Dr. Robin says that I should safely escort him out of here. So I will stay. You both go to the exit. I will reach there on time. Don't worry about me. And he moves towards King Omex. Lesser and Lily carried Quinn with them and moved towards the exit gate. Outside the Grand Hotel, Dr. Robin was waiting. He received a message from someone. Go to the nearest part. There is the exit. And Dr. Robin moves towards the exit path. He sees that many people are coming out from a hidden path. When Dr. Robin sees that Lucia is also with them. Dr. Robin Lucia, what are you doing here? Were you also inside the hotel? Lucia, yes, Dr. Robin. And she tells everything about how she came inside. Dr. Robin, he gives his car keys to Lucia. You can take my car. And when Lucia and Martin go outside the park, they hear a voice. Hey, Lucia, wait for us. Lucia looks behind and sees Alessa and Lily carrying Quinn, coming out from the hidden path. Lucia runs towards Alessa. Where is Alex? He didn't come with you. Alessa. Long story. He will come, but he has some work there. First, Dr. Robin, what should we do with him? Referring to Quinn. Dr. Robin, let's go to my home. I will tell you what I will do with him. Martin, he is still afraid. Everywhere inside the hotel is filled with bloodshed. Alessa, we have seen these things in battles, but he is experiencing this for the first time. Lily, Martin is a kind-hearted person, but what King Omex was doing is totally against humanity. Then they go to the parking lot and take Dr. Robin's car towards his house. When Lucia is driving the car, she remembers Quinn and asks, Lucia, Dr. Robin, is it good to do the same thing they did with your daughter? Shouldn't you give him to the police, and they will do what is legally needed? Dr. Robin, you will see at my house what I will do with him. Alessa, what are you talking about, Dr. Robin? And Dr. Robin starts telling the story of what happened to his daughter on that day. And Dr. Robin stops telling the story of what happened to his daughter on that day. It happened five years ago when I was working in my laboratory. My daughter Quinn, 17 years old, was coming home late from school. He had some work at her friend's house. She had already told me during a call that I shouldn't worry. She said she would come by herself. It was around 9 p.m. and I waited for her until midnight. When she didn't come home, I went looking for her. And this is what I found on the way to her friend's house. An abandoned street where many dogs were fighting over a bone. When I looked closely, I realized it was a human leg. As I looked further, I saw the entire body cut into pieces, with no clothes on. I immediately called the police and tried to find the skull of the person, but I couldn't find it. I also felt fear for my daughter. I tried calling her, but her mobile was switched off. Suddenly, I noticed a mobile phone thrown into a corner of a dustbin. When I examined the phone closely, I cannot express the situation in words. It was Quinn's mobile phone, and the last message she sent me was, Father, please help me. However, her message didn't reach me because she was brutally killed before sending it. A few minutes later, the police arrived at the scene and understood the situation. Alex and Lucia also arrived there after a few hours. The police discovered that 30% of the body had been eaten by street dogs. On that day, I decided that one day I would seek justice for my daughter. After a few months, the police found the culprits, and they admitted their crime. But for me, I always wanted them to die. 
lifetime imprisonment wasn't enough for them. Before their trial, they showed no remorse for their heinous crime. My little daughter was killed and raped by these three people, and they brutally dismembered her just for their satisfaction. When I learned that they were released by the court after paying a large sum of money to influential government officials, all my hopes were shattered. But today, King Omex has done a great job organizing this event, and due to this event, these people have faced death. After hearing everything, Alessa said, It's a really sad thing, but why does this girl have the same name as Quinn? Dr. Robin replied, When she kills someone, she takes their identity, and she registers herself with that name everywhere. She has no name since birth, so she adopts names after killing her victims. And then they arrived at the lab. On the other side, inside the hotel, Commander Totem subdued all severely injured criminals, and now they reached the fifth floor where King Omex was. He opened the gate and started fighting with some subordinates who were standing in front of the gate. It took him some time, but with the help of his soldiers, he managed to kill all of them. Meanwhile, King Omex closed his eyes and started meditating, deep in thought. And they all stood there, as if time had stopped. Now, what happens next? When Alessa and Lily left Alex, the three of them started fighting. King Omex stayed aside, watching the entire fight. Dindon fought with Alex. Adina fought with Ryzen, the god of savior who had no fighting abilities and could only dodge and protect King Omex. And Pacha fought with Manya. Meanwhile, some other subordinates were standing at the front gate, awaiting Commander Totem's entry. Dindon used his chainsaw, attempting to kill Alex, but the chainsaw got stuck between his bones. He tried to remove it, but he couldn't believe that Alex was still alive. How are you still alive? He exclaimed, and then resumed fighting with a knife. Somehow, he managed to use the knife to create a large hole in Alex's stomach. Alex felt the pain, but his bones slowly recovered from the damage. Dindon then pulled the pin of a high-explosive grenade and tried to insert it into the hole. However, Alex caught both of his hands despite his severe injuries. Unable to throw the grenade, Dindon's body gave up, and the grenade exploded with him. His body was obliterated. Dindon attempted to pull out another grenade, but before he could throw it at Alex, his body collapsed, causing the grenade to explode in his hand and wipe out his entire body. Meanwhile, Alex's body slowly recovered from the damage. He stood up, removed the chainsaw that was stuck in his chest, enduring a great deal of pain. On the other side, Pacha fought with Mania. The fight between them was intense. When Mania saw that Dindon had been killed, she became fully enraged at Alex. Because she loved him, she ran towards Alex to kill him, but Pacha seized this as an opportunity and cut off both of Mania's legs. With no strength left, Manya attempted to throw her screwdriver at Pacha, but Pacha caught it and threw it back in reverse. The screwdriver struck Manya's head, killing her. Meanwhile, Adino and Ryzen were engaged in a battle. Ryzen deflected every bullet shot by Adino using his magic. Adino knew he only had one magazine left, and he was aware that there were more enemies to face, while Ryzen was a god. Alex called out, Take care of Ryzen. I will go after King Omix. Upon hearing this, Ryzen used his powers to slow down time and went towards King Omex, telling him, Now, I can't help you anymore if Alex is involved in this battle with the gods. I need to leave. And he goes out. They then see that only King Omex is there before Adino and Pacha run towards him. Welcome to the Soul World, friends. King Omex greets them. They're all standing in the shape of a cross, with their heads towards the sky, their eyes completely white. At the same time, the army commander reached the fifth floor. When Commander Totem saw this, he wondered, What's happening here? Is there a god among us? He indicates a soldier to take a position from the right. But as the soldier moves ahead, he also stands in the shape of cross. Commander Totem doesn't understand what's happening. He commands all troops, saying, Stay back. 
We will not go ahead. One soldier asks. Should we kill that person from here? Commander Totem responds. No, these people's lives are in danger. Pointing at King Omex. He is controlling everyone here. King Omex has possessed a new god, the god of souls. All the souls from the bodies have been transferred to the soul world, which is ruled by Win. On the other side of Last Down Town, Diaga is having a conversation with Trent, his secretary, and Gilbert. Diaga asks, Do you remember which god you saw on that day? The one possessed by King Omex. I'm not certain Trent responds. But when he possessed that god, the whole earth was shaking. Building I was in collapsed, and I managed to jump out before it was completely demolished. Diaga looks at Gilbert and says, Idino is in real trouble now. We need to help him. And they all laugh together. Iaga looks at Gilbert and says, Idino is in real trouble now. We need to help him. They all laugh together. Gilbert says, My brother Idino thought that if he killed that person, he would easily take your position. How foolish my brother is, he doesn't even know about it. And he shoots Diaga, and he completes his words. There is no relation between money and power. I have been waiting for this for so long, now I have a chance to rule this city with full power. Christian looks at all this, filled with fear. Why did you do that? He believed in you. That's why he brought your brother into this event. He knew that Adeno couldn't handle their legal businesses. If he took over all the businesses, he would easily turn them into illegal operations by engaging in illicit activities. That's why Diago always wanted you to take this responsibility after him. Gilbert. He has lived long enough. He was just a burden to himself and others. He couldn't even protect this city from the rising new gang that's challenging us. I put efforts into making our gang stronger. But what did they both do? My brother decreased our strength by sending members to King Omex's event, and now he goes there again with more members. That's why Carl's proprietorship now has only eight members left, including you and Trent. They did it for their satisfaction, and I killed him for my satisfaction. Christian, who has served many years with Diaga, says... He didn't hate either of you, but you created a negative image of Adeno in his mind. That's why he isn't here. If he were, he would have protected Diago from you. And now, today, you have accomplished your goal. Gilbert responds. I have no regrets about my decisions, and I don't want to kill you. I have obtained what I wanted. If Adeno somehow survives this event, he won't have the right to live anymore in this world. He will be killed. Christian asks, how could you do these things to your own brother? You are not human. You are a monster. Gilbert retorts, call me whatever you want. If you want to stay here, I won't resist. If you want to go, I will freely let you go. Christian silently leaves the room. Gilbert wonders about the ongoing events at the event. Has a winner been announced yet in King Omex's event? Trent? No, they are still fighting inside. Whenever Adeno moves outside from the hotel, we will kill him. The army has also taken positions from the inside. After a few seconds, Trent receives a call informing him about another way to get inside the hotel that is not yet occupied by the army. He goes to that location. Gilbert looks at the chair where Diago was sitting and says, What I have now is what I have awaited for so long. Inside the hotel, everything comes to a halt as if their souls have been wiped out. Suddenly, Alex's body stops moving. Alex? Ha ha ha. Yeah, I'm still alive. Commander Totem checks Alex's history and finds no criminal record. He warns Alex to surrender, threatening to shoot him if he doesn't comply. Alex, however, ignores them and keeps his gaze on King Omex. Knowing what is happening inside his mind, Commander Totem repeats his demand for Alex to surrender, pointing the gun at him. When Alex doesn't respond, the Commander orders his soldiers to position themselves ahead, but just like before, the soldiers behave the same way. Commander Totem, witnessing this, stops shooting at Alex. 
but each time they shoot, the damage inflicted on Alex is instantly recovered. Alex, now furious, engages in a fight with Commander Totem, while all the soldiers stop firing at him. However, the shots have no lasting impact. During the brawl, Alex seizes two rocket launchers from the soldiers, one in each hand, and mercilessly beats them. Each soldier he strikes is left severely affected. The commander calls for more soldiers, realizing he needs reinforcements. Alex kicks the commander in the face, causing him to fall to the ground unconscious. Alex then proceeds to the stays and exits through the front gate. Outside some soldiers are still present, unaware that someone has come out, but when one soldier spots Alex at the front gate, he shouts, Prepare your guns, the enemy is here. Alex swiftly runs toward that soldier and kicks him in the head, as if playing football. The soldier's neck breaks, and his head jerks backward. Everyone starts firing at Alex, but due to the limited number of soldiers, Alex easily escapes from the scene. Alex, perplexed by people calling him Alex, comes to a stop in a corner of a shop and gazes at his face. He realizes that something is wrong, and this is not his own body. Filled with confusion, he runs toward a silent and dark street, disappearing into the darkness. Meanwhile, inside Dr. Robin's house, they all gather in the room where the hidden door to his research lab is located. Martin. Dr. Robin, who do these preserved human organs belong to? Dr. Robin, these organs belong to my ancestors. My entire family has been studying medicine using these preserved organs for over 150 years. I also have the brain of my ancestor, which is well preserved. Lucia, how can you live alone in this house? It feels haunted. Alessa. You want to reincarnate your daughter by transplanting her brain into this body. Do you think it's the right decision? Will she be happy in this new body? Dr. Robin, I don't know, but everything she imagined and did to my daughter, all the terrible things she inflicted upon her, I will now remove her brain and give my daughter a new life in this world. Alessa, but I thought only Dr. Jekyll had the ability to perform such a procedure. How will you do it? Dr. Robin shows them a diary, explaining that he has read it and now knows how to proceed. However, he requests their support during the operation. Lily and Alessa, who received training during their time in the army camp, begin preparing for the operation. Martin decides to stay outside, unable to witness the proceedings. On the other side, outside Alex and Keo's house. Gilbert! Kill Alex's mother, Keo, and his girlfriend as well. Ensure that no evidence is left behind. The members of Carl's proprietorship can enter the house of Alex and Keo and simultaneously take the lives of Alex's mother, Keo, and his girlfriend. Gilbert thinks to himself. I knew there was something strange about you, Alex. You supported my brother Adno, but now you have no purpose left to work with him. After a long and intricate operation, Dr. Robin successfully completes it. His daughter begins moving her fingers and legs, shouting for help and questioning her father's whereabouts before fainting. Dr. Robin, it's time to remove the bandage from Quinn's face now. Lesser requests a few more hours of rest for Quinn, and they all exit the room. As they step outside, they notice Alex sitting with Martin, engaged in conversation. Alex, however, merely gazes at their faces, thinking to himself. So these are Alex's friends. These foolish humans. And laughs. Lesser and Lucia rush towards Alex. They question Alex about his arrival, informing him that Quinn is alive now due to their reincarnation efforts. Alex remains unresponsive. Lucia holds his hands, leading him to where Quinn is sleeping. She points to Quinn and tells Alex that she is still alive, expressing how he always carried guilt for not reaching her on time that day. But now, she has been given a chance at a new life. Alex acknowledges what Lucia says, stating that he has witnessed it all. Suddenly, Quinn wakes up, her face covered in bandages. She points a finger at Alex and accuses him. 
Shane. You are not Alex. Who are you? Alex responds, confirming her suspicions, and taunts the humans for their abilities. He laughs loudly and walks toward the exit gate. Declaring that Alex is dead, and the body belongs to him, walking away slowly. Upcoming events In the Soul World, the events involving Alex, Adino, Pacha, and King Omix are left unresolved. The identity of the entity living inside Alex and its relationship with the God of Snow, Ira, remains unknown. Furthermore, Gilbert's next move after taking over the entire city, as well as the story from 1,000 years ago, are left to be revealed in the second season. If you enjoyed this story, feel free to share this with your friends and acquaintances. Thank you.